Uh, but what I want to do is, is, is I just want to spend the rest of the time that we have, just a little bit of time that we have today, and I want to illustrate to you what serving really looks like, okay? Can I do that? Yeah. I want to illustrate what serving really looks like. But, but first, let me just tell you this. I think you've heard it, but, but I want to share why it is we should serve, and I want to tell you how our serving impacts God, right? That's what we really have to know, um, because I believe this. I think it's pretty accurate that all of us here, that everyone here, we have the goal, I would hope, of being more and more like Jesus. Amen? That's our goal. That's what we're after. That's what we're trying. We're trying to be more and more like Jesus every day. Well, we're trying to have the mind of Christ. We're trying to have the actions of Christ. And so to do that, we have to go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7, says it like this. It says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset, here we go, as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. He made himself a servant instead of holding on to something to benefit himself. We've all heard that expression, Jesus saves, haven't we? Yes. Well, guess what? Jesus serves too. Okay. Amen? Amen? Jesus serves too. See, one of the best ways to be like Jesus is to serve like Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the best way, again, we just read it. He left heaven to come down to serve. So one of the best ways, again, to be like Jesus is to serve like Jesus. And when we serve, serving, we can break this down so many ways, but serving basically does two different things. Serving, number one, glorifies God. Amen. Amen. When we serve. And number two, it builds up other people. That's right. That's what serving does. It glorifies God and it builds up other people. Amen. And, and see, what we have to understand as a church, somehow we have this idea that we have a choice whether or not we should serve. But can I tell you that according to scripture, serving is really a command. It's not a choice. It's not. The Bible says this in 1 Peter. It says, God has given you each a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. So what? Use, Use them well to do what? Serve. Serve one another. You see, serving is part of the way that God grows us. For sure. For sure. Okay, I know. It's not exciting. But it's true. <laughs> Serving is a part of the way that God grows us. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to be transparent here. For all of y'all that served with us at the Jam and Outreach. Okay, thank you guys. Again, 120 folks that were saved that day, 3,000 bags of groceries served. But can I tell you something? I was one of the hosts of the event. I showed up to check in, and they didn't have my name. What? They had no badge for me. I couldn't get in. And I thought, man, this is going to be some problems. And yes, could, we, could, could there have been some organization? Yes. And if we ever do it again and we start earlier, yeah, we'll take care of all of that. But my point is this is that God used all of that to grow some patience in us. Yeah. 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 Amen? He, he grew some patience in us. We don't look at the situations like God is growing something in us, but he is. So I want to do this real quick. I want to illustrate, if I can, what the uniform of a servant looks like. Can we do that? Sure. And, and to do that, what I want to do is, um, you guys know, that a long, long, long time ago, 
Uh, my dad played professional basketball. And he played in an era that they wore the really short shorts. <laughs> You know, not, not those Michigan things. He, he, he wore the really, really short shorts. So what I want to do is many of you aren't familiar with, with what my dad did, and that's okay. I was actually in high school uh, when he retired. But what I want to do is I want to walk you through his career really quick. And I want to illustrate that by showing you his jerseys. And we're going to tie that into our message. So my dad was first drafted. In his first team that he was drafted, he was a number one draft pick, and he was drafted by a team called the San Diego Rockets. The San Diego Rockets. So that's him up there. That's my dad. And if you notice here on the back of his jersey, he didn't have a whole name. He just had E. Huh. Written on the back. Yeah, come on. I see. Yeah, somebody, somebody's Googled. Okay. Okay. So his first team, San Diego, he had E on the back of his jersey. So then he got traded from San Diego. Then we moved to Maryland. And his team there was the Baltimore Bullets. And this was the jersey that they wore. And this jersey, the cool, now this was complete 70s. You can see the style, V-neck and all that. But <laughs> church colors, come on somebody. And if you notice on the back of the jersey, it had his first name. He graduated, he went from E, now he's Elvin <laughs> on the back of his jersey. <laughs> Then the team updated and they, they changed some things around. And so then his uh, jersey then changed to look like this. Oops, uh-oh. The bullets. There it is, yeah. Red, white, and blue. Cap the Washington bullet. So this was the jersey that the bullets wore. And then on the back, you can see it's gone from E to Elvin. Now it's Hayes. <laughs> and finally, when he retired, he got traded back to the Houston Rockets. And this was the last jersey that he wore. The one that the Rockets retired, and he is Hayes, and now he's 44. So, now, I wanna ask you a question. What do you notice about these uniforms in particular? Somebody said, somebody said, well, the number has increased, right? Not only has he gone from 11 to 44, but guess what? The name has also increased, yeah. right? At first it was just E. Mm -hmm. Then eventually it got to be Hayes. Now, I guess the question is, what I want us to think about today is as we are servants, as we serve God, what uniform should we be wearing as a servant of God? What uniform would we best look at or look in? What, what, how would we best, what would we look good in? That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. As a servant. <sighs> well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to read a scripture first, and then I'll show you. Scripture is Mark chapter 14. Verses 16, I'm sorry, verses 12 through 16. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, where the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus asked, uh, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go to prepare the Passover meal for you? Watch this. So Jesus sent two of them, two of them into Jerusalem with these instructions. Here it is. As you go into the city, 
A man doing what? Carrying a, Carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him at the house he enters. Say to the owner, the teacher asks, where is the guest room that I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. So the two disciples went into the city and found everything just as Jesus had said, and they prepared the Passover meal. So real quick, what do we notice about this man, the man that Jesus talks about? What we notice about this man is he tells the two disciples, go find a man. What was the man doing? The man was serving. Carrying a pitcher. He was carrying a pitcher of water. He was serving. You know what else we know about this man? Or thank you. Robin, you are on it. He doesn't have a name. It doesn't say, Jesus doesn't say, hey, go into the town, find Darius, and once you find... He doesn't give a name at all. Do you guys notice this? Yeah. 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 He doesn't give a name at all. In other words, this man that we see in the scripture isn't going to receive any credit. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. He's not going to receive any credit for serving. <laughs> um, I, I was a guy that was carrying the water. Please, please can, can I get some? <laughs> no. no. Right? No, uh-uh. See, the entire set of Jesus' instructions depend on this. Depend on the man serving when he was supposed to, where he was supposed to. All right, all right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Jesus says, go in and you will find. And so if the man's not there, Jesus' instructions, right. right? If the man's not doing what he's supposed to be doing, the instructions are no good. But because this man was serving like he was supposed to, where he was supposed to be serving, when he was supposed to be serving, it led Peter and John, watch this, to the upper room. You see, eventually, Jesus in that room would have his last supper. Eventually, in that upper room is where Jesus would pass the baton, so to speak. It was in that upper room where so many things happened. It was in that same upper room that after the crucifixion, the disciples were hiding out. They were scared. It was in that same upper room that a sound like a mighty rushing wind came through that place. It was in that same upper room that tongues of fire would appear over them. It was in that same upper room that they were filled with boldness and they received the promise and the power of the Holy Spirit in that same upper room. But the funny thing about it is the foundation of what we all believe was made possible by a guy who was serving when he was supposed to. <laughs> Where he was supposed to. Not concerned about getting any credit. That's it. It led to all of these other things. And if you don't get anything else out of what has been said today, or at least what I say, is I want you to know this. Is that your serving today can create an upper room experience for someone else tomorrow. You serving again today creates an upper room experience for someone else tomorrow. Oh, God, that's so good. So let me answer the question of what uniform we should wear as a servant. Uh, so you saw all my dad's uniforms. And I'm going to show you the uniforms that we should wear as a servant. It's hard for me to do this with two, without one hand, with holding the mic with one, but I'm going to show my best. <laughs> and little Houston Rockets. Oh my goodness. You see, here's the little, little bullets. See, there he is. There's a water boy right there. 
You had hair, Pastor? Yes, I had hair. So you were a water boy? I was a water boy. No way. You sounded just like See, what I did is I just served water. No one knew my name, but I just served water over and over and over and over and over again. I was in the right place. I was at the right time. And you know what I did? Even though I didn't shoot a basket, even though I didn't dunk a ball, what I did was I was helping somebody else win. Okay, you can take me off now. You see, again, what I want you to see is, see, as the water boy, again, it, 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 it wasn't about uh, get any credit or anything. And if you notice, on, on my jerseys, <laughs> there was no name. <laughs> Lucky to have a number. <laughs> and see, on this one, there was nothing on the back. <laughs> so I definitely wouldn't get any credit. But here's the thing, is you see here the progression, the names, numbers change. As a servant, again, it should be like this. Because here it is, we don't serve because of credit, we serve because of calling. Amen. And can I tell you, this is so evident because every week I see this, week after week, year after year, just faithfully serving, faithfully, like, like she said, some folks are riding the bus, some folks are getting, just to faithfully serve. Again, if you haven't heard already, thank you, we could not do any of this without you. But I just wanna encourage you today, that if you have not started yet, if you haven't started serving, can I urge you today, pick up your picture. Pick up your picture. Start carrying your water. Pick up your picture and just keep serving over and over and over again. Keep serving, keep doing what it is that you were called to do. Keep doing it wherever you are supposed to. Keep doing it whenever you are supposed to. Keep doing it without caring about receiving any credit. And I want to close with this. See, the most important thing that you need to understand is this. When it comes to talking about being a water boy, when it comes to talking about wearing a jersey like this, we have to understand this, that we are not just carrying a pitcher of water. No, what it is, we are carrying the living water. We're carrying the living water. And I promise you this, if you keep doing, if you keep serving where you're called to serve, whenever you're supposed to, doing whatever it is you're supposed to do, if you keep doing without caring about getting any credit, I promise you, the right ones will follow you and they'll find their upper room experience in God through you. Amen. 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 Let's give God a hand today.